Good evening and welcome to Tomorrow's World. Now, as you can see, I'm not in the studio tonight, but live from British Telecom's new network management centre in London. Now, this really is a master control system for virtually all of Britain's telephone network, and it has to deal with breakdowns and overloads that might occur during sudden emergencies. Well, tonight, we are going to put it to the test. Now, if you were watching BBC One half an hour ago, you remember that we asked you to join us in an experiment that has never been done before. We asked you a simple question. Should we have British summertime all year round? Phone one phone number for yes, phone another one for no. Don't call them now though because those lines are closed. Well later in the show we'll see the result of that experiment and in the process see some of the remarkable ways that this nerve centre works. Thanks a lot Howard. And we're hoping that all those calls will turn out to be the biggest telephone vote ever so stick around for that result. Also in tonight's programme, Maggie sits for the robot artist with a very light touch and Howard goes shopping with the intelligent trolley. But first though, here comes Judith. This twin trailer lorry is nearly 60 feet long, which makes it the biggest bread van in Britain. Every day it carries over 10,000 loaves into the city of Birmingham. But there's something else unusual about this lorry that at first you probably wouldn't notice. Well, this is the bit to look at, the join between the lorry and the trailer, and you'll see that there's only about a foot between them. Now, this close coupling gives the whole rig much better aerodynamics and greater stability, which minimises the risk of jackknifing when braking hard. So, it seems like the ideal solution. The only problem is, how does it go around the corners without scrunching the containers together? Well, this coupling does it by getting longer or shorter as it goes along. Underneath here, there's a simple gearing system which will push this trailer from this position here, in line with that line, right the way back here on a full lock. So how does it do it? Well, over here we can see exactly what's going on. Now, this block at the front here represents the A-frame or coupling attached to the lorry, and this end is the bit that's bolted to the front of the trailer. Now, when the lorry turns, that movement drives these cogs here, which in turn pushes this connecting rod, so extending the coupling so that the two halves don't crash into each other. So, let's see it in action. Give it a whirl, Judith. <laughs> As soon as Judith starts to turn, you can see that this part of the trailer is pulling back here. In fact, it's now about halfway to its maximum distance back. And the vital thing to look at is the gap between the lorry and trailer. They're just far enough apart to make sure that they will never, ever crash. The system will also work on conventional articulated lorries between the tractor and trailer units. Right, now here's Maggie taking her seat for a very unusual type of scan. Sit here, please. Now I want you to stay calm and don't move for 15 seconds. You won't feel a thing. It's our quiet harmless, okay? Right. Now, here we go. Well, as you may have guessed from the hairstyle, I'm not here for a medical scan. No, I'm here to be immortalised. That laser went right the way around my head, and now every hair, every facial detail is stored in an image processor. And the idea is to use that information to sculpt me in bronze, just like this vaguely familiar character here. Now, normally, a subject would need to sit for at least a couple of hours, perhaps even a couple of days. And during that time, the sculptor would just be getting the vague shape of the head right. He wouldn't even have started to work on the finer details. Well, as you saw, I sat just for a few seconds, and the computer should take care of the bulk of the sculptor's work. Now, first, I have to check that I'm happy with the pose. I didn't realise my nose was quite as big as that. There we go. 
the vertical lines correspond to reflections which have been picked up as the laser has moved around my head. And there's now a complete three-dimensional recording of my head on this disc. The disc is then used to guide a computer-controlled milling machine as it carves away at a solid block of foam plastic. At this stage, the scale of the finished bust is chosen. It turns out that a life-size head can look disconcerting, so mine is to be 85% full size. This milling not only takes the drudgery out of the first stage of sculpting, getting the rough shape of the head, it goes on to cut in detail, like the lips and the eyes. This foam head already has a very good likeness, but before it can be cast in bronze, a real artist is required, and that's Adrian. So tell me, Adrian, what do you need to do to it now? Well, the milling machine, uh, you get computer lines on it. And first of all, what we have to do is take those lines down to bring out the uh, form of the head. Mm -hmm. But what are your feelings about all this? I mean, don't you feel it's taking away the skills of the artist? In fact, I see it as helping me mm -hmm. because uh, it actually blocks out an accurate portrait of the head on which I can build and bring the expression out, especially in areas like the eyes, just to bring out in the feeling in the actual portrait, the way it's posed, and just the basic feeling of that person. Now, something that intrigues me is whether some of your subjects ask you to be rather, shall we say, more flattering than real life. Certain subjects ask me if I can uh, reduce the amount of fat under the chin or the actual size of their nose or the shape of the eyebrow mm -hmm. because every face is not symmetrical and uh, it needs some tuning sometimes. Well, in that case, we'll have the bags under the eyes removed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the foam head is now finished, all spots, bags and pimples have been removed and it's ready for bronze casting. A powerful kiln melts the bronze. Meanwhile, the foam head has been used to mould a perfect inside-out hollow version in heatproof ceramic. Any number of these moulds can be made from the original foam head. The moment of truth comes when the bronze has cooled. A final brush and polish and I'll be ready for inspection. Well, I think it's pretty good, though I have to say, it's very strange to stare at yourself like this. Now, this is already being offered as a commercial service, but there are other applications. For instance, the technique could be used to copy priceless antiques without ever the need to touch them. Or in industry and medicine, it could be used to copy difficult shapes. After all, if it can cope with me, it can cope with anything. Well, it'll never match the real thing.